up here and one of the suspects gets out of the small SUV. Here he is here and he's going to walk over to the mailboxes and here he's going to take and light some kind of an explosive. A detective said it was some kind of an improvised explosive device, probably some kind of a large firework like an M80. You're going to see him light it there and then he's going to run back here to the SUV and then as the SUV drives off with the three other teens inside, it explodes and then it explodes again and then you're going to see the flames go shooting 35, 40 feet in the air as they ignite a bush. And this is when the victim, who is the hero in this case also, acted quickly, rushed outside to try to keep the fire from easily spreading through the neighborhood, possibly causing a wildfire because of our dry conditions right now. Tadavik Aprikian talked with him this evening. What you can't hear in this video is the sound of the massive mailbox explosions that woke up Tony Hain at 2.40 in the morning. That's him in his own surveillance video taking a chainsaw to tree branches to keep the fire from spreading. The bush went straight up and just like that. In the daytime... It smells worse now than it did at the time. The charred mailboxes and the damage clearly visible. This was the box that had been... Um, the, the device was set in. So the back of this box was actually in the bushes back there. The box itself had been blown up and down in a crumpled mess here. The lid is out there in the Blackberry somewhere. Sheriff's detectives believe fireworks were used to create an explosive device. They're calling the crime a felony bombing with the bomb squad investigating. This is actually real serious. This is considered a bombing and we need to find who these suspects are. Sergeant Abbott says the suspects appear to be four white males, teenagers between 16 and 18 years old in the Ford Escape that pulls up. One of them gets out and walks over to the mailbox, lights the bomb and takes off. Seconds later, as their vehicle drives drives away a huge explosion, followed by another one. This could have actually killed people. Haynes says they're lucky the fire didn't spread. If there'd been wind, it would have been over because it would have just gone into these trees. The mailboxes sit at his elderly neighbor's property. They didn't hear Hain trying to wake them up. In the middle of the night, they didn't even hear the blast because their hearing aids were out. They didn't hear me banging on the door. All seven of these mailboxes are going to have to get replaced. Neighbors got an estimate of how much that's going to cost and the damage the fire caused to this landscaping. That's come to a total of about $3,000 so far. You know, I work from home, Steve works from home. Haynes says the bombing means no one gets mail at home right now. We have to pick it up downtown. That's affecting businesses many of his neighbors run from home offices. Haynes says others rely on mail order prescriptions, all much bigger impacts he says these teenagers never thought about. I think they didn't understand what they were doing. In Woodenville, Tadavik Aprikian, Q13 News. Well, later that very same day, two young white men or teens that investigators are calling persons of interest stopped and took photos of the damage. It was actually the second time they had come through there. Uh, they were driving through the area and then they came back and they took the photos. And so the surveillance camera grabbed these images. You'll notice it's a different vehicle than the Ford. And on the back of that vehicle is a paper license plate. Uh, and so they uh, are trying to identify these people. They're calling them persons of interest, not suspects. So they want to identify them. Here are the suspects. This was the second time they had come by to, uh, there. This is the actual suspects, pardon me, in the Ford Escape. And uh, they're asking anybody that knows, you know, who owns this vehicle or who was in this to contact Crime Stoppers. There's a cash reward of up to $1,000. So if you have any idea who was part of this bombing, Call 1-800-222-TIPS or use the P3TIPS app. Honestly, detectives are hoping that the parents of these kids uh, see this, talk to their teens, come forward, bring them forward, talk to detectives, and pay for the damage that these homeowners have suffered. Every kid does something.